Today I'm joined by Dr. Aruna Subramaniam from Stanford Healthcare who can help clarify some of that information for us. Thank you so much for being here. Sure. So first things first, some Bay Area schools went back to in-person learning today, but you know, lately we're hearing a lot about the Delta variant, how it's sending more children to the hospital. How is it affecting them differently? Well, we know Delta variant is very contagious, and so we need to take the usual mitigation me methods that we've known about till now, but people are just getting tired of doing it, and I think it's really... Um, getting people more scared, but we need good ventilation. We need to make sure that teachers are uh, vaccinated. We need to make sure all the staff is vaccinated and kids, I think masking is, is important for kids, even though there's a lot of opposition in some areas about it. I think we need to keep our kids safe because Delta is very contagious and kids do get sick from it. So if you previously had COVID-19, can you actually catch the Delta variant? You can, just like even after a vaccine, you can, usually you get a much milder illness, you, you, but you can, it can still replicate in your nasal passages and can cause uh, cold and flu-like symptoms. Usually you don't get it in the, uh, in, in, in the lungs and, uh, and more severe disease, especially if you have a good immune system. So you're still protected with the vaccine either way? Yes. So are breakthrough cases happening at a higher rate with the Delta variant? I think uh, to some degree uh, they're happening because people are really mixing more, right? So it's hard to know, is it because of the variant or is it because of um, more mixing without masks? But definitely it's, we know it's more contagious than the previous variants. And so you get higher viral loads, higher amounts of virus in the nasal passages. And uh, so that's why we are seeing more breakthrough cases. Of course, the longer you're together, if you're indoors, you know, in people's faces for longer, we know that you're much more likely to catch it. So Dr. Fauci is saying that the vaccines could be approved by the FDA sooner than we thought. What can we expect once that happens? I'm hoping that more people will feel comfortable getting the vaccine once it's approved and that, you know, we can use maybe uh, booster doses or third doses for people with low immune systems um, for, for really uh, helping them get a good response because a lot of times they don't have the level of protection as others. But I think we still need to think of this globally and really get vaccine supply to the rest of the world. Otherwise, as more and more spread happens, that's when new mutations come up. So I think we need to look at this as a global vaccine um, equity and distribution too. So I know you mentioned that if you're vaccinated and you do get COVID-19 or the Delta variant, your symptoms aren't as severe, but you know, what if you contract COVID as a fully vaccinated per person, can you still suffer from long-term effects even though the, it's not as severe? There are a fraction of people who are still suffering from long-term effects. It looks like a lower fraction than the, um, if you got it without vaccination, but there is still that concern. We don't know the exact numbers of people who are getting long-term effects, but I think that if you can take care and not be exposed a second time or exposed to it after vaccine, then um, that would be ideal. I don't think this is as benign as people thought it was. All right, good information. Thank you, Dr. Aruna Sabrania from Stanford Healthcare.